Super Formula. The best open wheel single seater race series. We are racing. Action straight away. Oh no! And a massive off. That's a disaster. That was an incredible move. Another side by side action. This is the kind of racing that we were looking for. That's a tire loose. Oh, a big smash! Oh, a big smash! And into the bag! And the safety car is out. He goes to the outside. And he gets the job done. Hello and welcome to Super Formula Action here from Suzuka on Red Bull TV. Myself, Bryn Lucas and Martin Plowman are going to be talking through all the action from today's race. A race at one of the most iconic circuits, not just in Japan, but globally as well. Martin, thanks for joining us. Great to have you here. No, thank you, Bryn. It's great to be back. And Suzuka, wow, it's, it's one of my favourite circuits. Like you said, it's iconic. It's, it's steeped in history, the home of Japanese Grand Prix. Yeah. Wow, win for a great show. You know, qualifying for me really set the tone for a, for a fantastic race. Yeah, well, it is an iconic circuit. Qualifying was pretty impressive, but what are we looking to expect from uh, Suzuka today? It's a circuit that often throws up quite a few exciting results. It does, yeah. For me, it's, it's, a, it's a great passing opportunity. Uh, you know, it always you know, throws up lots of surprises, you know, lots of fantastic racing, so I can't wait for, for today. Well, fingers crossed for that one. So let's have a look then, shall we, at what happened yesterday morning here, UK time in qualifying. Q1A and a very strong lineup battling it out for positions. Last year's championship runner up Ryo Hirakawa, 2020 Suzuka race winner OU, and new boy Giuliano Alesi all in one heat trying to make their mark from the off. Jean Alesi's son Giuliano with a strong first push, ending up second behind the experienced Super Formula driver Hirakawa. OU with the sixth fastest time, easily making it through to Q2. Otsu in seventh, also through in the Mugen Red Bull car. Q1B's lineup looking just as impressive. Last year's champion Naoki Yamamoto alongside 2021 championship leader Tomoki Najiri. But on track, it was Nirai Fukuzumi taking the fastest time of the session. Yamamoto with a solid drive ending up third fastest in front of Najiri, with both easily progressing to Q2. Q2 lasts just seven minutes, but there was a long wait for the first competitive time and a big surprise. The reigning champion couldn't make it work, Yamamoto dropping out. Again, it was Fukuzumi with the fastest time of the session, ahead of Team Mugen's Tomoki Najiri and Toshiki Oyu of Nakajima Racing. On to Q3, and with the two fastest times so far, all eyes are on Nirai Fukuzumi. With another strong performance in Q3, he won all his qualifying sessions and will start from pole. The same result in Q3 as in Q2, with championship leader Najiri second on the grid in front of Oyu. Team Impulse Ryo Hirakawa took fourth on the grid and a great chance to get his first podium of the season. Giuliano Alesi on his debut, making a very positive start to his Super Formula career, finishing with the eighth fastest time of the day. And so the grid looks like this. Strong all weekend, Nirai Fukuzumi, he starts on pole. Tomoki Najiri on second. And Toshiki Oyu, the winner here last year at Suzuka, he starts third. Ryo Hirakawa rounding out the second row. On to the third row, and it's Ukyo Sasahara starting fifth. Rotomo Miyata of Ventolin Team Toms in sixth. Yuhi Sekiguchi seventh. And new boy Giuliano Alesi on his debut for Ventolin Team Toms. He starts eighth on the fourth row. Hiroki Otsu ninth. And Naoki Yamamoto, the reigning champion, way back in tenth. Sho Suboy starts eleventh. And on the sixth row, rounding it out, Nobuharu Matsushita making his return to Super Formula. Yuji Kanamoto, KCMG, he starts 13th. Kenta Yamashita, a surprise, down in 14th. Sena Sakaguchi, the second of the Kurumu Ingen cars, he's in 15th. And Kazuya Ashima, the only rookie racing car, out on track, 16th on row 8. Kazuto Kotaka, he starts 17th. Yuji Nakayama for Kondo racing on 18th. And rounding out all 19 drivers, it's Tatiana Calderon. 
So a fascinating qualifying than yesterday and a few surprises. We said straight away it was the reigning champion Yamamoto not making it through Q2. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise for me. You know, he's, he's obviously moved teams from Dandelion to Nakajima Racing and things just really haven't clicked for him yet for some reason. But his teammate is, is outshining him. You know, OU starting in third position. But, for, um, you know, um, Nak it was Yamamoto a strange one, actually, because when Yamamoto moved in the winter, you mentioned that he changed teams, but he was the reigning champion at Dandelion, at the Como team Dandelion. He moved to Nakajima Racing. Nakajima Racing seemed to split up their two drivers, Makino and Oyu, and Makino went in the opposite direction to Dandelion. And Oyu is outshining and out outperforming his... Well, his mentor, I suppose. Yeah, it's not looking good for Yamamoto, but for me, I think it comes down to that confidence factor. You know, he was quoted in the week as saying that, you know, he takes full responsibility for his pit crew being tired. Yeah. He's been working them to like to midnight sometimes, going through the data, going through all the details, practicing pit stops. And for me, I just think he's, he's feeling very vulnerable right now. And, and, you know, he's being outshone by a younger teammate and, you know, he, he's got to find that rhythm again. Yeah, well, confidence is key. And you talk about his teammate Oyu. It was here at Suzuka last year, in fact, that Oyu, well, he almost lost his job didn't he? But he managed to save it by getting a win, his first ever win in Super Formula, and really a performance that he needed. He desperately needed that win last year. You know, it was his maiden win at Suzuka. And but let's be honest, before that, he had a horrendous 2020. He twice crashed into his teammate, and the interview with his team boss, Nakajima, was, was very telling. Mm. I think he was not best pleased with the driver, and he was very close to losing his drive. He really was. But it's Nirai Fukuzumi who has performed so well in every single session. He's led the way in every single one, taking his debut, his maiden pole really in Super Formula. So that's what we think. But what about the drivers? Here are their thoughts. I had no grip in the practice, but we did a good step to the uh, qualifying and I did a good lap so P4 wasn't enough for for winning maybe but yeah it was my uh, best performance I think. あ、ま、まさかこの順位に取れるとは、ま、正直フリー走行を終えた段階だと思ってなくて、ま、本当チーム に、こう、フリー走行終わってからいろいろと改善をしてもらって予選の ま、非常に嬉しい気持ちですし、ま、今までね、なかなか結果を出せなくて、え、ま、惜しい2位だったり3位だったりっていう予選の結果が多かったんですけど、ま、まずはこうやってね、えっと、ポールポジションを取らせ
when I saw the potential in Q1, I was like, you know, just keep keep the rhythm, and then once and then if you're able to be in Q3 from there on, just try your best. So I was able to go into Q3. I, I had a good car, good car balance. Um, I worked really hard with my engineer to sort of get the balance I needed because in the beginning it was a bit tricky in the morning. Um, so it's what we were able to do. I was quite happy. But then in Q3, I think I might have overcooked it in general. Uh, so I think less would have been better. We'll come to what you said in just a few seconds, but if you're thinking, Alessi, I know that name. You're right. He's a son of Jean Alessi, the F1 race winner, 32-time podium uh, standing man as well. <laughs> That's an interesting way of saying it, but there you go. Who knew how that sentence was going to end? But Giuliano Alessi there, the pressure is on him. He has come to Japan to race in Super Formula Lights, but has been given a promotion, really, to the Benton Team Tom's first team with Super Formula, and he's done pretty well, hasn't he? He's done a fantastic job so far, and you know, to step in at the last minute to, to be a replacement driver. You know, these cars aren't easy to drive, but not only that, being a young driver is hard enough to make a name for yourself. But when you've got a famous name already, the spotlight is on you as a driver and, and there's going to be an e extra level of expectation. But also he's jumping between two different formulas. So he's got Super Formula Lights and he's racing three times over each race weekend. And he's also racing in Super Formula. So this weekend he's already raced twice in Super Formula Lights and got two podiums, a third and a second. And he's also got a race in Super Formula and then get back in the Super Formula Lights car. So it's really, really tricky to jump between those two machines. I think the added factor as well is the fitness factor the fact that you're going to be out so much more you know fitness is definitely a concern but as you alluded to with the the jumping between the two cars the driving style is so different between a super formula lights car and a super formula car the super formula car is obviously bigger it's heavier you've really got to squeeze the power on very gently not to spin the tires up whereas a super formula lights you can just get in the corner and plant the throttle and, and the traction off you go so Lovely. it's hard yeah. to switch this between the two. Yeah, it certainly is. He's got to get onto it straight away around Suzuka. And to show us around the track, it is, in fact, Rio Hirakawa. Here he is. Hi, I'm Rio Hirakawa, racing for Team Impal. I'm going to introduce Suzuka track. Uh, it's 5,800 meter, and it has 18 corners. We start the lap. Here's a main straight, and going into turn one, it's flat out. 270 km per hour, like four or five G force. And going into SS, it's really high speed, just throttle control, then you can turn. And this right, you just touch the brake, but keep momentum. This is almost flat out. Then next corner will be like fastest corner. It's 230 or 240 km per hour, so really fast. The next one is uh, hairpin. It's quite slow speed, so it's a really different rhythm uh, compared to the first part of the track. So you have to be really smooth for this long straight. The next one is also fast, spoon one, spoon two, it's really fast, more than 200 kph. Also here is really important, the exit speed, uh, like long straight. Uh, this is a famous corner, 130 out. Uh, this is chicane, uh, use the curb. Uh, try to rotate the car, then coming for the uh, main street. This is a lap of me for Suzuka. Great to see that track up there from Rio Hirakawa. You get a real sense of the speed and the pace of these cars and how the, the downforce lets them fling the cars into every corner. Um, as we look at the cars out on track, really, look to the right-hand side of your screen, that number five car, Nidai Fukuzumi, he has led the way every single session here this weekend. And interesting to see the winner's board as well. See a name on there three times, Naoki Yamamoto, won twice in 2018 and once in 2020. He won from pole position in each of those races too. So pole position here at Suzuka seems to be a, a pretty good advantage as it normally is in motorsport. Yeah, that's normally the case. Obviously qualifying it as this 
all over the world is so important. But this is a track where you can overtake. For me, the two main passing opportunities are coming out to the last corner, heading down into into the first corner using the OTS system, the, the overtake system, which we'll get to a bit later. And then, of course, out of a spoon curve, heading down into the world famous 130R, which is a, a flat out sixth gear, 210 miles per hour corner before breaking hard into Casio Triangle, the last chicane, hard on the brakes down into second gear. So those are the two main passing opportunities for me, and that's what we need to be looking out for. Yeah, and we've got a 30 lap race, you can see 30 laps or 70 minutes, whichever one comes soonest. Fukuzumi leads the way, Najiri for Team Mugen. He had such a storming start to his Super Formula season this year with a pole position into a race win. It was a, it was a, just a, an incredible race. Didn't put a tyre wrong in that entire race at Fuji. And straight away on the grid, it's the Inging car. Yeah, Sena Sakaguchi. Sena Sakaguchi. This is a real shame. Hopefully they can get that started. Let's talk about Senna for a second. He appeared once last season in Super Formula and it didn't go to plan. He didn't make it through the formation lap, but that's because he drove off and hit a wall. Um, this time it looks slightly different for him. And we were talking about him in qualifying yesterday as they tried to get it started. It looks like they have got it going. Off he, goes, he might so have to start the back of the train then. Now potentially, so he's got, he's got to be able to get back in front of the cars before mm. The, uh, the safety car line, or else he may have to start in pit lane. It's a shame for him, but as I was saying, he had that one race last season. It didn't go to plan, didn't make it through the formation lap, and we thought, well, he's lost his chance. He won't be back in Super Formula. But then you look at his Super Formula Lights performance from last season. He came second in the championship to Ritomo Miata of Ventolin Team Toms, and without Miata, he would have been the champion without doubt because he absolutely stormed it. Of course, but you know, he had that one opportunity to come in as a standing driver, and we talk about the M&N moment, you have one chance, one opportunity, yeah. and he, he didn't. He didn't even make it around the, the formation lap. It was a very, it's not, did I say, a silly mistake he made. He, he spun the tyres up, cold tyres, trying to warm them up, and he, he put it into the wall and crashed out. So. And it's interesting, yeah. cold tyres is one thing in Super Formula that you might not be used to seeing with other formula. If you watch Formula One, for example, where they sit there with those lovely big duffel coat tyre jackets on to keep the tyres as warm as possible, well, they don't have them in Super Formula, so when they change the tyres, they are cold, cold, cold. I, I, love, I love the fact that there's no tyre warmers in Super Formula because that really puts the onus back on the driver, it puts the skill back in their hands where they, they need to, to work the, the, the brakes hard to, to, to generate a lot of the heat in the, in the brake discs and heat the tyres from the inside side out that's the best way to, to generate heat and get the tire in the correct operating window yeah yeah absolutely spot on there we just saw the team manager one of the most animated characters we've ever seen i think in motorsport he's brilliant he's so team. passionate and he yesterday is. talked about his drivers being his kids and yeah. uh, whenever there's a camera there's there's a, there's the team manager yeah it's, it's almost like watching jürgen klopp talking to his uh, his players at liverpool the way he kind of flings, flings his arms around and gives them a hug all the time makes them feel like the most special human beings on the planet and with nirai fukuzumi here at the moment, and Ukio Sasahara stepping in for Tudasaki Makino. I'm sure he's a very happy man. I should mention no Makino at the moment, and that's although he moved from Nakajima Racing to Dakomo Team Dandelion in the winter, he is uh, suffering from meningitis, so we're hoping to see him back at Autopolis in the next round. As the cars now form the grid, there is Tomoki Najiri in the Mugen car. Third on the grid is OU. Fourth, Ryo Hirakawa. There is OU. Keep it clean, my friend. You did so well here last time round, and he's going to want to do the same. You can just see Oshima at the back of the grid making his way on. We'll talk about the green roll hoop lights in a bit. The yellow car just making its way to the left of your screen now. That is Matsushita making his return into Super Formula. We'll come to that story as well. There's lots to get through. And the Red Bull car there of Hiroki Utsu on the grid too. So it looks like he might have made it back on Sakaguchi, which is good. There is Hashino of Team Impul, the team director, just sitting back, relaxing. He's going to want some good things from his drivers. We are looking ready to go. So keep your eyes on the very front of this pack. We've got on the right-hand side, Nirai Fukuzumi. On the left-hand side, as you look, Tomoki Najiri in the red Mugen car, the winner of Fuji. We have the flagman waving at the back. The lights will go. One, two, three, four, five reds. Lights go out. We are off and racing here at Suzuka. It's a good start from Fukuzumi on the outside. 
side. His teammate Sasahara trying to get down. Najiri on the attack goes to the inside. Can't make it go round there as it is Fukuzumi leading into the first turn. Najiri second, third at the moment. It is Ryo Hirakawa. He jumps to third. And look at that. If you take a look at Sasahara in the second white car, the Dakomo team dandelion car, he has jumped from fifth up to fourth straight away. Nice clean start there by the guys. Not much action going in the, in the back, but Yamamoto there really getting aggressive, getting down the inside of Alesi, and it made it three wide going into turn one, and, and they all made it through cleanly. OU has dropped back quite some distance. Look at that, I think he's sixth now, in fact. So not a great start for OU. This is a track that he really wanted to get a decent performance from, but it is the Tacomo team dandelion cars that are really making a mark in the first few turns here at Suzuka as they head into the hairpin. And what a tight hairpin that one is. Already starting to stretch the lead as well at the front is Nirai Fukutsumi. We're on board with Ryo Hirakawa. Puff of smoke from Tomoki Najiri into this double apex spoon curve. He'll get straight on the throttle, trying to close that gap as they head down the back stretch into 130R. Too wide now. Oh, on the outside, it is the condo racing car of Kenta Yamashita trying to get round. Couldn't make that one work himself, but he's really, really putting the pressure on. And in Super Formula, you don't have to look very hard to well, find what a, a bit of drama. What a move Yamashita there, around the outside of 130R, and, he, and he's done the move on, on, uh, on Yamamoto. Move smoke as well. Tyres going off onto the dust. And we'll start to get some good idea, some idea of where the drivers are happy or prepared to be for the short term as a little attack a little moment there it wasn't a real attack it was a little kind of um, a wave should we say from yuhi sekaguchi trying to make his way through and there is no take on the inside or is there oh tatiana calderon through uh, at the back of the the pack but just ahead of her it was kataka of kcmg trying to make a move on yuhi nakayama sitting in for sasha Fenestra at condo racing and what a terrible start by Oyu. He's already dropped down 11 places on that first lap there, so something's gone horribly wrong for him. He avoided his teammate, though. That's the most important thing. So the gap is starting to build already for Niro Fukuzumi. You can see there as he exits the hairpin. Tomoki Najiri behind. All filing through now. It looks like it's started to, to settle for a few laps, and it will do, but remember, they have to have a pit stop here in Super Formula. They have to do a tyre change, and it has to happen after the 10th lap. So sometime between the 10th lap and the last lap, they must change their tyres due to the new regulations from last year and this year as Super Formula seems to adapt to the COVID pandemic. And the Benson Team Tom's car of Miata going through on Yamamoto. So let's talk really roll hoop then. You can see the yellow car coming around now. That is Matsushita of BMAX. Now he was using a bit of OTS, or he's on a recharge of OTS. The little green flashing light you can see there on the Nakajima racing car, that tells us that he has been deploying his OTS. Now, OTS, the overtake system, it allows an extra 50 or so horsepower by increasing the fuel flow. I thought we were going to see. overtake from the Impul Sekiguchi, but no. Um, yes, the overtake system, an extra 50 or so horsepower from the increased fuel flow to that car. They press the button, they get this increased fuel flow, and then we see that green light flash quickly, around eight seconds after they've pressed it. Yeah, so they, they, they get approximately 200 seconds of OTS usage throughout the whole race. They, they'll press the button, as you said, there it increases the fuel flow to the engine. You know, more fuel means more power, an extra 50 or so horsepower. And, then, and you've got to use it wisely. You can't just go around the whole track pressing it whenever you want. You've got to press it when on, on the longest straight. And, and really, you've got to set, set up the car in front for an, for an overtake already and, and time, time that used to perfection. And when, once the drivers have used up all their allocation, you'll start to see a, a red flashing light, which, which tells us at home that they're, they're, they've got less than 10 or 15 seconds of OTS left to use. A slow flashing light means the drivers have already used the overtake button and then it will take 100 seconds for it to recharge. So it's a, quite an interesting strategy and, and it's something to, to watch out for. Yeah, yeah. Keep your eyes at the top of the screen as well because you can see the Red Bull car of Otsu really trying to put the pressure now down on Sekiguchi of Impul. Sekiguchi up in fourth at the moment.
really leaning the pressure on, as you can see there as well on the uh, the Condo Racing car. Of oh, Kenta Yamashita is OU. Now he's really got to do uh, some pretty swift laps, I'd say, at the moment, OU, to start uh, making amends for what happened on that first lap. But he's already fallen 12 seconds behind. And there he is, keeping an eye on him. He's trying to close that gap, OU, as much as he can on Kenta Yamashita, the Kondo racing driver, very experienced driver, Yamashita. He'll be disappointed with his start. So here is OU on a replay going on the back of the Vantelin Team Toms. He's pulling up into the slipstream, just tucking up in the gearbox, just looking down the inside. Quite a straightforward pass there going into with one thirty r And that was over Giuliano Alessi. That's one down, ten to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Will he be counting them off like that or just thinking, I've just got to get past one by one by one? At this, at this stage of the race, you've got to forget, the best thing you can do is forget mistakes, what's happened. The worst thing you can do is try to make up for mistakes. Yeah. Because mistakes compound mistakes and then yeah, you end up sparring out of control. It'd be interesting to see what happened though at the start because we don't know why he fell back, but fell back he did. I mean, he lost, what, 10 places straight away, which isn't ideal. Fukuzumi leading the way then, uh, around a second or so ahead of Tomoki Najiri in the second of the Mugen cars, the red car, you can see it in the picture, and then it is Ryo Hirakawa, last year's nearly man. He is third on the grid, or third place at the stands. That's a, a great start by Fukuzumi. He's, he's really just setting the pace, he's controlling the race right now. He's already pulled out a 1.7 second lead over Najiri. As we know, Najiri is he's, he's no slouch, he's, he's, a, he's a very fast driver, so he's, he's controlling this race, he's controlling the tyres. As you said, we do have to do one pit stop, but you've got to try and make these tyres last as long as possible. So Fukuzumi leading the way, Najiri second. We've got Hirakawa, oh, it was a bit of a dive to the uh, outside. It will be a dive to the outside, touching wheels may be, but Matsushita holding off. No, he doesn't. OU, a great move from OU there. It looked like they touched wheels for a second, but OU went round him as if he wasn't there with the use of OTS. And now OU is on the back of Yamashita. What a move there. That takes some serious bravery there to, to stick it around the outside of yeah. the first first corner. So here is a replay of the start then. Let's keep an eye on OU. Oh, oh big stall. Bogged down then. And that's all it takes, a bog down for half a second and all of a sudden you're in the middle of the pack. And look at that really congested going in. Lucky to get through and your mind goes back to other races of last season where OU would have been that car straight away into someone else. Yeah, he would, he, in the season past he would have been a bit of a bowling ball, but oh, just... Oh, Hirakawa, you can just, just see how let the much... Bog, the revs bog down and he just stalled on the line. Yeah, Hirakawa moving to the outside as you see at the top there, Fukuzumi defending as best he can. Hirakawa won't really know what's going on around him at this stage either. You're just hoping, aren't you, that everyone behind you gives you a bit of space. Well, that, that really gifted him that, that place there yeah. and gives him a, you know, some clean air to chase the, 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 the front two guys. So on board with OU, let's see. Oh, it just bogs, doesn't he? Just bogs. And look at that, he's a passenger. And at one moment, I'm sure he's thinking he's going to get collected at any any second it's, it's so hard to do you know sitting back at home you know watching this you know think you know you, anyone can do this but yeah. the clutch is, is a, a paddle operated clutch it's not not a pedal so to try and find the bite point you're looking at a, a number on a screen a, like a digital number and then you've got to just re carefully release your, your finger until you find that that bite, the bite point and as the lights go out he's just let his finger slip a bit too much let the revs drop on the engine and boof he's bogged down bogged down he has Ventolin team toms to go out of Miata trying to attack on the back of Sho Suboy from Kuruma Ingen. Couldn't get it done, but you know, it's good to see that Miata is now fighting again with Sho Suboy. These two very young drivers, and Suboy is a real hot uh, hot driver and a hot prospect. He is. Last year, he, he, he took a, you know, a, a dominant win and, uh, and third in the championship. And I was surprised when I was looking back at the standings that you know he's just been a consistent performer and yeah. uh, he's, he's definitely a star in the future. He actually finished third in the championship last year, but he had three retirements. And when you take drop scores into contention, imagine that you drop, you have three races. So you had to drop one of those scores as well and he still finished third in the championship. So if he could put it together and be consistent over the course of a season, even though this year in Super Formula there will be dropped scores again, if he could just become Mr. Consistent, I feel like he could be a champion in the making. That's the beautiful thing about Super Formula. There are, there are so many talented drivers, there are so many race winners and potential championship contenders. You, you, you cannot pick between them. No. Fukuzumi is lapping really consistently. Look at that. And the 140s, maybe the very, very low 141, but that's very consistent, really within about two tenths a lap, which is very impressive. And he's started to build up a gap now over Najiri. 
of around two and a half seconds. Nigeria will be okay with that at the moment, though he'll just be monitoring the gap, not letting it get any bigger, I'm sure. That's the idea anyway. Yeah, he needs to keep the gap to around about two, two and a half seconds. Any any less than that, he's getting into the dirty air of the car in front, where the, 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 the vortex of air is spiraling off the, the rear wing, and look where you, the car behind you lose downfall. So if you get too close, you'll end up burning your tires. So Nigeria's doing the right thing right now. He's keeping lots of nice clean air for him just to just do pound around, tick off the laps and save the tires for later in the race where he can decide to push on it and, and close the gap down. Yeah, if you look at the top five, top six drivers, in fact, really, almost all of them have got a two and a half second gap between, apart from Otsu, who's right at the back of Yuhi Sekiguchi at the moment uh, in the fight for fifth. Uh, interesting as well, from, from yesterday's qualifying to today, the, the wind direction has changed quite significantly. We're now, we've now got a tailwind going into the first corner. And, and why that's important? Well, it really affects the balance of the cars. Uh, tailwind will really just make them lose front-end grip, so the, the teams have been struggling to find refine the balance. And uh, a lot of drivers have been cranking in more wing angles to try and get that downforce back to allow them to get closer to the car in front. Looking at Senna Sakaguchi at the moment, he had that troublesome departure on the formation lap here. He has to put that behind him, and he, he seems to have dealt with it quite well. But that is very tricky for a young driver, isn't it, when you don't manage to get away? As we look at the overtake on Alesi, that was a very, very impressive. Using OTS, of course, so he gets the extra boost of power, but he just drafted past him like he wasn't there around 130R. Yeah, Alesi is not quite settled into the race yet. You know, he did a fantastic job yesterday in, in qualifying, but at the moment, he's just not quite found the rhythm of, of the pace of, of these Super Formula races yet. Slow blinking lights of Matsushita and of Sakaguchi as well. It means they have deployed their OTS and they're on that sort of waiting period now before they can use it again. Keep an eye on these gaps. Well, again, still two and a half seconds pretty much, but you can see Sakaguchi on the back of Matsushita, just reminding him all the time that he is there. But that gap is very, very small, only half a second. So that is going to be damaging Sakaguchi's tyres, isn't it, Martin? Yeah, massively. I mean, there's, there's, there's two strategies going on here. There's, there's guys who will, will pit straight away after the lap 10 when the pit window opens to try to get out of the traffic and, and, and do the undercut where you, you come in, you go, you go on to fresh tyres and put down some blistering times in clean air to try and pass cars in the, in the pit lane. Whereas other guys, if they're happy with their balance and they're in clean air, they will try to extend the stint as long as possible, burning off the fuel as they go, and then pit at the very last moment. The one problem is, as we know, with no tyre warmers, it takes around three or four laps for these tyres to, to generate heat and to get into the operating window. So one of the arguments is, the longer you go, and if you pit at the very last moment, you'll finish the race on cold tyres, but in fact, you, you won't have done the entire time it takes to, you know, to get them to work. Yeah, yeah. So how much of this gap maintaining is it that's in the jury or how much is it that's Fukuzumi at the moment? The gap is just looking after the last three laps or so. It stayed at two and a half seconds. It's not really growing at all. Is that Fukuzumi dictating the pace or is that Najiri dictating the gap? I'd say it's a bit of both. There's a lot of cat and, cat and mouse going on right now. Fukuzumi wants to increase the gap ever so slightly, but then Najiri is just managing it in, and every time Fukuzumi gets away, Nigeria will put in a fast lap just, just to keep the gap as close as possible. Kenta Yamashita trying to get past Kunimoto at the moment, just going to the outside. He's got a good exit, though, onto the last corner as we go around last curve onto that start-finish straight. And I'm not sure if OTS has been deployed, but he is. He's deploying OTS right now. He, I'm sure, is going to get past Kunimoto. He goes to the inside, goes to the outside. That's defensive from Kunimoto. To me, it looked like he moved a couple of times in defence. Bit of a double move there, a bit of a grey area, but let's see if the stewards pick up on that. I think I'd be asking my teammate to get straight on to the, the stewards about that one because it was subtle moves from Kunimoto, but he certainly did move right and then left. And I think that uh, Yamashita might have an argument to say, look, I was about to go round him, he blocked twice. And as we know in motorsport, you can only defend once in terms of uh, making a, a definitive movement to the one side, left or right. And ever since that moment there, Kunimoto is now starting to stretch that gap, but Yamashita is going to be straight on the back of him, and he's got Oyu on the back of him as well in 12. So Oyu fell from third uh, at the start of the race after bogging down, and has made his way back up to 12th at the moment. The Yamashita desperately, desperately trying to get his way up that grid. 
Oh, and oh, that is Fukuzumi. Fukuzumi has had a blow on his rear right and is going to work his way around. We saw the uh, Dandelion team starting to make their way out to the pits. It looked odd because he was on lap nine, lot lap 10, but he's had a puncture that has completely lost the back end. He will be able to get into the pits. I say he will, he should be able to get into the pits. But how much damage is that going to cause to his race? I would say a significant amount if this pit stop will not count in his mandatory pit stops. This is disaster there for the race leader, Fukuzumi. And he's got to like he's, make he's his got way to through. Be now he's got to cross over a live circuit and get into pit lane. So this is going to drop him all the way to the back. He's also missed the natural pit lane entrance there too. So he's going to have to drive across to get onto it, which is... Uh, not ideal. So Nigiri now inherits the race lead from that one. That was very, very good from Nigiri because all the way through this, he's just kept that two and a half second gap. He's an old, uh, old, he old head in this. He knows what to do when it comes. This, to this is uh, terminal. It looks like suspension failure yeah, to me. Look at, look at the rear rim there, and, and that wishbone is flailing up and down. That that looks like it's a, a game it may over. May not have been that to start with, but it's certainly become that, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're going straight into, into the pit lane. What a shame. Nero Fukuzumi who has looked absolutely on it this weekend. He has led every single one of the sessions, practice, qualifying, led from the top. He will be devastated. Wow, what a sad way to end the race. It really is, really sad. Now our attention turns to his You can team. see there, look at the top there, that piece of chrome there. The wishbone has come away from the chassis. Yeah. There's, something's failed on that car and uh, that's, that's what's led to the puncture. What a shame there for Fukuzumi, our first retirement, but it is this man, Tomoki Najiri, one last time out at Fuji, leading the way here at Suzuka. Two race wins, Martin, for the first two races in Super Formula with the drop scores. That puts him in a such a strong, it might sound like a ridiculous sentence, of course, but a ridiculously strong position for the championship charge. Yeah, no, Jerry, for me, has always been a nearly man over the last couple of seasons. He's only ever achieved one win in the last three years, uh, each, each of the last three years, sorry. Yeah. But um, he's never quite been a strong, strong enough contender for the championship. But this year, he's come out with a, a different mentality. He's being aggressive, and, uh, and he's really taken the, the fight, fight to the drivers this year. Finished fourth two years ago in the championship, fifth last year. Uh, and hopefully, he can make a significant step up the ladder as we look at Yuhi Sekiguchi going into the pits. So the pit stop tyre changes are happening as we speak. Many, many tyre changes going on. It will take around eight seconds. That is a really, really slow stop again from Yamamoto. Problem with the front left. They couldn't get that tyre on, that wheel on. And it's the pit stop curse of Yamamoto. Pit stop curse, but I, I think it's a lot of it's his uh, own doing. As he said to himself, he's been working the guys extremely hard and uh, You've got to be fit and fresh to, to do these, these fast pit stops, and uh, he's not been giving the guys rest to, uh, to do that. Well, I wondered if he might have changed that after the last round at Fuji. I thought maybe he would have given them a bit of a break, but we will have to wait and see on that one. There is Senna Sakaguchi, Tatiana Calderon behind him. So we have lost one car only, and in Super Formula, we often see safety cars, don't we? Now, this might be a race we don't see a safety car, of course, there will be one now. You just jinxed it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? There could be one, that's for sure. Ryo Hirakawa now second today. And at the top of the show, we were saying that Ryo Hirakawa is one of those drivers that needs to perform well at Suzuka to really get that monkey off of his back because it was here last year. He had two opportunities to get his championship battle really, really back on track, and it didn't go to plan. No, it did not. But Hirakawa, for me, is, is, is consistently one of the front runners. And, and he's always been the benchmark like last season. You know, he was my shoe in for, for the championship and then it all fell apart halfway through the year. Mm. He's two, just over two seconds behind Nigeri at the moment. Ukyo Sasahara, some six seconds back there as we look at Ukyo Sasahara. Bit of a slow getaway there. He oh. couldn't quite find the gear. And more filing into the pits. Sashima at the back, I believe, going into the pits just there. Green light flashing at the top of the screen as we look at the Impul car of Yuhi Sekiguchi, then the Red Bull car of Hiroki Otsu, Team Mugen. KCMG of Yuji Konemoto 
and the Kondo racing car there of Kenta Yamashita and now Yuhi Nakayama sitting in for Sasha Fenestras. I really wanted to see Sasha Fenestras have a full season in Super Formula because he's a driver that we saw perform last year. Really, really incredibly gifted driver. Just didn't have the, the sort of the rub, did he, last year? No, he didn't. Fenestras, you know, is an electric talent and it's a shame that he's not here right now. Of course, travel restrictions are keeping him from uh, entering into the country right now. Yeah. But so it would be good to see him back in the series. Tomoko Nijiri leads the way. Ryo Hirakawa is second, just biding his time, one would say. Around three seconds, the gap now, 2.8 seconds. Oh, it's dropped actually to 2.2. So the gap has been maintained at this stage. And I think it goes to show that anything can change when it comes to Super Formula with the leader, Fukutsumi, dropping out with what looked like suspension failure, then leading to a rear left, rear right puncture. Rotomo Miyata up to fourth now. This has really shaken the pack up with Oyu in fifth and Alessi in sixth. It's really changed during the pit stop. And um, with all the cars piling into the pit stop to do the change at the same time, there is often a handover when it comes to championship positions. You look at Kotaka of KCMG having his pit stop and back on to the race leader of Tomoki Najiri. So two and a half, 2.8 seconds ahead of Hirakawa and then it goes back 11 seconds from Hirakawa to Suboy. But the top six or so still have yet to pit. So it is going to, what would you say, 35, 40 seconds, didn't we? About 40 seconds for an in and an out lap, something around that area. Yeah, okay. And if I jump my mind back here, Sasahara is 42 seconds ahead, uh, behind, sure, in eighth place. So. It's there or thereabouts. Sasahara's got a chance of really working his way back up. It's close now. I think now that these split strategies are happening, mm. the guys who, who have pitted need, need to stay up there and, and maintain their, their tyres for at least the next 15 to 16 laps. And the guys who have come in for the pits, they've got to really work hard to generate the heat to maximise these, these outlaps while the tyres are not up to speed. Yeah, Kotaka is seventh now. He's pitted. And... No, it wouldn't fall into his hands, would it? Here is the race leader, or was the former race leader, Tomoko Najiri. He goes in and... Not bad, not bad. Sevens, that's actually very quick in Super Formula terms. A seven-second pit stop there for Tomoki Najiri. Where will that bring him out when all this is done and dusted? Now let's see what Hirokawa can do. He knows that Najiri's pitted, and Hirokawa's gone green in sector one, meaning that he's done his fastest uh, first sector time. He knows he's got to push as hard as he can now to try to do the undercut and, and overtake him before he does the pit stop. Suboy also went fastest as well there, so there is the number six car of Ukyo Sasahara, the guy that we thought might just be on the back end of Najiri, but he's, he's some way back. A big, big load of uh, wheel spin there coming out of the pits, just hanging onto the rear tyres. That They'll be stone cold right now and, and really hard to manage. There is Oyu we're keeping an eye on now. This is Toshiki Oyu, who will probably be in love with Suzuka. It is a circuit he really made his name, I think, in, in Super Formula. There is Ryo Hirakawa then, Ryo Hirakawa. Last year's nearly man, it was um, unbelievable, really, that he, he fell apart as he did in both championships. <laughs> it was um, one of these things I think he would like to put to bed this year, get it done as quickly as he can. I expect him to go into the pits right now. He's leading the way. Let's see where he goes. And will he dive right? Yes, into indeed. the pits, which means that'll be... Has he, do, has he done enough? Yatta and Lacey will still need to pit. Hirakawa doesn't have a huge lead over Najiri. Question is, has he done enough to, uh, to, to make that jump? Even if he does come out in front of uh, Najiri on the cold tyres. Here is Najiri then. Let's keep an eye on Najiri. Hirakawa into the pits. They use the robot jack. Come on, lads, let's go a bit quicker. Robot Jack out the way, and he's off with a 7.1. Now, that's not bad. Najiri was Good a stop. 7. He's a 7.1. Let's have a look at the top end of the screen. Where is Najiri? There is Najiri, the top right of the screen, the red car. OTS flashing bright. He's going to get past Hirakawa without doubt here, but just how far ahead. Hirakawa on stone-cold tyres needs to get some heat into these and get straight onto the back. Oh, Najiri running wide. Najiri late on the brakes. What was going on? Obviously breaking a bit late, trying to take advantage as much as he can of OTS and he, out, he outbraked himself. 
pressure was on. He had to go for it. He's putting down, you know, fast times to, uh, to make sure that he gets back in front, but just locked a wheel up there and, and went off wide. Yeah, it goes off wide, and that means he's going to have some damage to his side. He's going to go onto the marbles. He's going to have to really kind of uh, restore his, his control up delete on his brain. That's the worst thing you can do is, is lock up the tyres because he just puts a flat edge on the tyre and creates vibration, and then the vibration leads to all kinds of problems. And 15 laps with a, with a flat spot is not what, not what you want. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it. I'm not sure how much he um, he locked up. I think he just outbraked himself and used his old experience just to release the brake and almost kind of um, slow it down the corner just by taking momentum around, but running wide using that as opposed to having to 50p his, his tyres. But Najiri is leading the way, and Rio Hirakawa is right on the back of him and getting heat into those tyres at every turn as they head now down to back stretch. We're looking at uh, Tsumoki Najiri, then Hirakawa, but the race leader at the moment is Rotomo Miata and Giuliano Lacy is second, but they do still have to pit, remember. And Miata's just done his fastest lap of the race. Of course, now the fuel load is going down, the, the, the cars will be getting faster. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see how, how long Miata can make these first set of tyres last. You know, is he going to try and stretch out the, the stint and then go to the end? Well, we're looking at Miata at the moment, and let's keep an eye on him if we can and see where he goes. Is he going to go into the pits on this one? Is he going to change his tyres? Is he going to stay out and pit deep? And I, oh, we have an upside-down car. We have... Massive crash. It looks like maybe one of the KCMG cars as the marshals run over to it. It is one of the KCMG cars. I don't know which one at this stage. So we might see a red flag here, Martin. That's a scary crash there. That's, that's not what you want to see. Looks a like huge a... lockup spinning, like a spinning top. And it's Something very, failed on very that quick. Looks like the right rear failed again. That is Yuji Kunimoto collected into the tires. And it's the tires that turn him. So. It is a big blowout. Rear right again. Possi Same. Possibly another right rear suspension failure, which is interesting, though. It's, you know, it's a lot of high loads on going into the suspension there, and it's a bit of a common fault at the moment. Yeah, safety car out, as we'd expect to see here. Uh, it's going to slow the pace down and bring the pack all back together. Now, looking here at all the drivers, Miata and Alessi have not pitted, so in he goes, taking advantage of this but it won't be an advantage for Miata because, of course, he's going to go into the pits and so is Alessi and I imagine Alessi as well. In fact, that's, uh, if they go into the pits now, do their pit stops, they're unlikely to get out ahead of the rest of the pack, even though the rest of the pack are currently slowing down. And they are stacking, aren't they, in Ventolin Team Toms. They're going to try and get this pit stop done and also get Alessi in and pitted too. But he's just cruising down that pit lane, hoping that Miata gets out of his way so they can get straight on with the next pit stop. And there he goes into the pit box. Well done there, pit team. So Miata rejoins ahead of Sho Suboy. Bit of a breather then. Oh, that's good. So out of the car. It's good to see. Gets Kunimoto. That's a bad place to go off at certainly that sort of pace, but the tyre wall or the, 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 the barrier, I should say, you see it's foam. It's, uh, it's an impressive structure that dissipated all that energy, and it was just as a result that the car flipped to one side. It wasn't down to a huge impact speed. It, was, um, it did its job. That's the most important thing. Yes, that's one of the fastest corners on the circuit, 200 miles per hour. And you don't one of the really fastest corners in motorsport, isn't it? It is. <laughs> you, that's the last corner that you want to have an issue there. and. Uh, but it did look like that was the same place that the race leader at the time, Fukuzumi, may have got his problem too. Because it was around there that we jumped to, to him and he had his rear right puncture. So maybe suspension failure is happening through... I, I wouldn't... I can't really see why it would suddenly happen. Could it be that the tyre blows and that causes the suspension failure? It's, it's hard to tell, you know. But looking at that first one, something clearly snapped away from the car. Wherever or not, there's... there's uh, there's, there's, there's curb damage or anything that, that's causing the, the suspension to fail, mm. or it could just be fatigue. You know, something that we need to go, go back. You know, get speak to the engineers about and, and try to diagnose. 
So the marshals tidying this all back up. Of course, we won't be able to go full race speed again until that barrier has been completely fixed and everyone is happy with it. Safety is important, the most important thing when it comes to motorsport. You as a driver, Martin, when this sort of thing happens around you and you're you know, in a car and you're collecting your thoughts you're behind a safety car and you know that someone's had a big off and you, you keep going past it and you're seeing the damage to the car, does that play on your mind or are you able to just block it out? Not at all. I think, I think it's, it's, it sounds horrible, but when, when the helmet is on, you compartmentalize everything and everything just goes out the window and, and you're only focused literally on, on your next job in the car and your own safety or, or mortality, literally, you don't even think about anything like that. It's just purely, how can I, how can I go faster? Yeah, I think my mind goes back to, um, let's have a look at Fukuzumi, actually. So here we are, this is Fukuzumi. Oh, a big blowout there. So big puff of smoke. It does look like it's dropped down already on that side, but is that suspension failure? No, it's yeah, not at the moment, is that it? That it was. For me, I think this, the suspension had, had broken, the car had dropped down, and that puff of smoke you'll see will be the, the, panel the, 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 panel, the wood panel on the underside of the car rubbing on the ground, and then eventually yeah, the suspension wishbone cutting into the tyre and exploding, and then the rest is history. Yeah, certainly is. Uh, time to get some heat into these tyres then. But I was actually thinking, if you go back, if you think of Formula One with Roman Grosjean last year with a big, big crash to the barriers and the fire and things like this, and they had a red flag, the drivers then had to collect their thoughts and get back in the car and race again. But you're saying that you just sort of decide, well, I'm going to get back in, I'm going to get driving again. I mean, Nicky Lauda is a big story, isn't it, when it comes to that sort of thing? You know, you knew he knew the danger. He'd had a horrific injury, and yet he decided that I'm going to just forget about that and carry on racing because it's already happened to me once now. So. Yeah, it's bizarre. I mean, it, it's something that you, you you think about after the fact, and then you realise, you know, what the hell was I doing? But in that moment, once the helmet goes on, you have to push it out of your head. You can't have any sort of negative thoughts or any thoughts about safety. You you have to just focus on the job at hand. And at the second that you start worrying about getting hurt, is this is the day that you should stop racing. Yeah, yeah. The jury is leading the way. Let's have a recap then of where we are after 18 laps of 30 behind this safety car. The jury leads the way. Then it is Rio Hirakawa for Team Impulse second. Ukyo Sasahara of Dandelion Racing. He is third. His teammate going out earlier on after a brilliant, brilliant qualifier. Sticking the car on pole, that was Fukuzumi. Couldn't make it through. Yuhi Sakaguchi of Impulse, he is fourth. Hiroki Otsu is fifth. That is a brilliant performance from Otsu, if you think about it, Martin. He's in the Red Bull car. He's not a Red Bull development you? driver, but he is in the Red Bull car. Uh, and that, I think, oh, an interview with Nirai Fukusumi coming up. Fukusumi, I think it was a perfect race for you, but what happened? Well, yeah, it felt strange, it felt strange after the corner, and then the tyre burst. And then it was finished. Well, the momentum was on your side until that point. It's really a pity. Yes, the pace was great, the momentum was on our side, and I was really fast. So we just have to analyze what the reasons were and take our chance the next time at Autopolis. I think we have another chance to win again. Good luck for you. Thanks. Clearly disappointed for Kutsumi there, Nirai for Kutsumi. A brilliant, brilliant performance from him. He'll be devastated really inside that he couldn't convert that pole position to his first ever race win. Trying to spin a positive saying that Autopolis is going to be his or could be his, you know, another good chance for him next time out. But when it comes to his championship, you know, if he could have left here today with, with a race win after his brilliant, brilliant third at Fuji going into Autopolis, that would put him in a very, very strong position. and, and putting a lot of pressure on the other drivers around him. It's heartbreaking, you know, that all this weekend, all the hard work has gone out of the window. That pole position yesterday doesn't mean a thing now, you know, the, those points that he earned. So now he's got to regroup, work with engineers, figure out what went wrong. But he, at least he knows he's got the potential and the pace to, to be a race winner, but he's still chasing that first win. We often see it in motorsport, don't you? These drivers chasing, chasing that first win. They can't get it, and all of a sudden they get their first win, and the floodgates open, and they get a few more. Yeah, confidence is everything in yeah. racing. You know, when you're chasing that first win, there's always going to be a doubt in the back of your mind. You know, can you do it? That you actually have to go out there, and, and then things have to fall in your favour. So I was just talking about Otsu. We see the Red Bull car. 
of uh, Team Mugen. So he's not a Red Bull development driver. He is in that car. It's the first time since the team really, since Red Bull took a car into Super Formula in 2017, that he's not had a Red Bull development driver in it. So he's under a lot of pressure because he's not a Red Bull development driver. So he's not under pressure directly as a consequence, but he's in that He's been given charge of that seat. He's definitely in the spotlight, and yeah. you know, obviously flying the Red Bull colours, you know, there comes an extra set of expectations. And uh, if we be honest, last year he made his debut in Super Formula at the end of the, end of the season, and he didn't really shine that brightly. But he had a great off-season, proved his worth, uh, you know, to, to, to you know, earn a spot this year. Mm. But the spotlight will definitely be on him this year. Yeah. Oh, you in ninth, started third. Very disappointing from him off the line, or disappointed for him, I should say, that I am, because he, he bogged down off the starts and fell backwards, but he's worked his way up to ninth at the moment. It's all going to be how they really make a restart, how they, how they get on the power, how they readjust to the racing conditions after this three or four lap, five lap hiatus. Yeah, this is going back into the cold tyres now. The drivers who, who can keep maintain the heat in their tyres you, you cannot overtake until you pass the start finish line. So really, you've got to work hard, brake hard, accelerate, keep the, the you know generate the heat from the brakes to uh, keep that thermal temperature in the tyre, and really maximise these next few laps. You know when the, when the track goes green. But you can see they've got to keep a certain distance. They can't go too far behind the car in front, if that makes sense. Ten car lengths, I believe it is. So they they have to keep the same sort of distance. But what you do see a lot of them doing is really standing on the brakes and then flooring their car as well, weaving as much as they can, trying to get superficial heat, as you've been saying as well, as baking the uh, the brakes to get the internal heat of the tyre as well. And doing all things they can. We have seen, bizarrely, haven't we, Martin, when they're weaving as well, we have seen in the past some cars and drivers falling off the track. <laughs> yeah, there is a bit, of a bit of a fine line between locking wheels up there like, like yeah, the jury did there. or uh, or putting it in the wall. It's all about don't have a lock-up because you'll create a flat spot and the jury doing something that you don't want to do. <laughs> so here a cow now biding his time. He knows this is a very, very good opportunity for him to jump straight on the back of Nigiri. Nigiri, though, remember, has got a lot of experience. It's not like Nigiri's just stepping into this car and won't know what to do. He'd have played this out in his mind for a few laps of what his strategy is going to be on the restart. It's, it's very easy as a driver to switch off. This is a time now, you, you, you know, you're going around at a slower pace, but you've got to keep the heart rate up. You've got to keep the, the heat in the tyres and the brakes. As soon as you see the, the lights go off, go off on the safety car, then you know it's time to go green. Yeah. 19 cars down to 17 now. We've lost Fukutsumi and Kunimoto to two very similar. We see lights are off on the safety car, so potentially we are going back to green this lap. Yeah, two very similar incidents actually with the the suspension or rear tyre blowout on the right hand side. Same tyre, same area of the track. Now the safety car is going in as Martin says. The jury leads the way. Hirakawa is second, Sasahara third. He's want to close that gap up if he can do, Sasahara. He's kind of held back a little bit. Not sure why he's not right on the very back end of Hirakawa at this moment. And it's strange, actually, that a lot of these drivers have kept the gap that they have. Najiri now bunching them right up. Here we go as we get ready for the restart, lap 19 of 30 at Suzuka. We're about to go racing again. Najiri needs to keep them all at bay. Hirakawa breathing down his neck. They apply the throttle up to full race speed turning around the last curve, on the throttle they go. Najiri leads the way, Hirakawa diving around, weaving as we go as well. We're on a restart, but we're still weaving. And on the outside, inside I should say, inside it is Otsu. Uh, we've got Shuboy as well and Miata all fighting it out. And it looked for a second like Shuboy was going to get past Miata, but couldn't get it done. Weaving left and right on the OTS, probably a bit of cold tyres playing in there, and he couldn't make it, uh, make it stick. But Miata, an absolute blinder somehow stopping him from doing that. It's tricky, I suppose, jumping straight on your OTS, Martin, when you've got cold tyres, trying to make that one work. It is indeed. No, not, not a lot of action so, so far, but I think these guys now have just got to get their heads down, find the groove. With 10 laps to go now, they really need to make a move now. Yeah, they really, really do. Everyone has pitted, so there's no more pit stops required from any of the drivers. We're single filing it around now, but beware, we're going to see a lot of OTS being deployed. Although they do have to wait 100 seconds after they've used it. The roll hoop flashing bright just there 
on Kenta Yamashita's car as he tries to close that gap on OU and another flashing light as well at the top of the screen as Sasahara comes over the brow of the hill on the back of Hirakawa into Casio Triangle just not close enough at that stage and Hirakawa so have a look at his roll hoop as well because I don't think he deployed OTS no he didn't so Hirakawa going to the right, Sasahara following, he's got OTS, he's got that extra boost, but he cannot make it work, cannot get close enough, it's real cat and mouse at the moment, isn't it? Hirakawa did a really good job there, in fact Hirakawa has got a red roll hoop, so Hirakawa is into his final 20 seconds of OTS. I had flashbacks there of, of uh, Suzuka 2020 when these two came, to, came together and collided in a, in a spectacular crash into Turn 1. Yeah. So interestingly, Hirakawa has got a red flashing roll hoop and behind him, Sasahara, is green as you like and that means he's got a lot more time or certainly some more time available to him and that means Hirakawa is going to have to rely purely on his skill alone to stay ahead of Sasahara who will have that increase in fuel flow and therefore more power for slightly longer in this race. Behind him, it's Sekiguchi, then it's Otsu, Miyata, Yamamoto, Shuboy and Oyu. As we head to the back of the pack, there is Tatiana Calderon in the three von Drago, uh, Drago course car. Shuboy splitting up the two Nakajima Racing drivers at the moment, and Oyu, the younger one, is behind the reigning champion of Yamamoto. Yamamoto, seventh uh, on the position at the moment. He was 10th to begin with. Let's keep an eye on Yamamoto who's behind him. Shosuboy is showing his hand. Goes to the outside. He's going to try and get a favourable exit here of the chicane into the last curve. But Yamamoto can dive on OTS, I think. Fast flashing lights from Shou Su Boy. He's lining this one up. He goes high and he tries to go round the outside. Can he make this one stick to the outside? Shou Su Boy onto the outside, running slightly wide. He now has the inside of the curve. He makes that one stick. Shou Su Boy goes round on the outside of that first corner into the snake. And now we have got OU directly on the back of his teammate, the reigning champion, Naoki Yamamoto. A great move there from Sho Suboy. Uh, what a move by Suboy there to just stick around the outside and hang it out all the way around the outside to then gain the inside position into the snake. Uh, fantastic move. He knew exactly what he had to do. He had to stay high on that uh, first corner, so he had the inside on the snake, and he just had to hope and pray, really, that Yamamoto gave him enough space. And Yamamoto, being the experienced driver that he is, gave him enough room. He could have ran him a little bit wider if he wanted to, just to see how strong his nerve was. But uh, brilliant stuff from Sho Suboy. Uh, uh, Yamamoto Weiss. coming under pressure from his teammate Oyu, so he'll be filling his mirrors right now, and he'll be looking, looking behind him. So OU, this is his perfect opportunity to attack and, and to get the move done. He, you know, Yamamoto is going to be very defensively right now. And this is the time to try and get, get by. Staying on board, it's a great on-board shot from OU. Keep an eye on the second of those two white and blue cars. That is OU that we're looking at. Ahead of him is his teammate, Yamamoto. Now, whatever you do, OU, do not drive into the back of your teammate this time round. All the great work that he has done over the last three races could be undone if he upsets Yamamoto, but I'm sure uh, that is also playing on his mind somewhat. Najiri still leading the way at the top end. Hirakawa, second. Oh, and to the outside, it's Miyata. No, sorry, it's a Lacey. It's a Lacey on Kenta Yamashita of Kondo Racing. And Lacey's really getting in amongst it, isn't he? He's really trying to, to show these drives he's got something about him. After a slow start, I think he's really found his feet and he's, he's starting to, to apply himself to this race. You know, it's, it's a lot to take in. It's a very overwhelming experience coming in. You know, you know a new start with a paddle, paddle clutch. There's a lot to learn, but I think he's really found his groove now. Najiri sitting pretty at the top of the pile. He'll be really happy with his, his race weekend, Najiri. 1.6 seconds ahead of Rio Hirakawa. One last time out, didn't he, at uh, Fuji. And if he could just hold on for another seven or so laps. Well, two races, two wins, and the extra points for pole position in race one and second 
in race in the second race of the season. That's a pretty decent haul from the first two rounds. In fact, he'd have only dropped one possible point over the first two races of the season. In fact, I'm going to have to go back through the uh, the notes here and look at when was the last time that a driver mm. has won a back-to-back -back race in Super Formula. It's it's going to be. It's not in my memory. Not not in recent memory for sure. No. Interesting though, going back to the Nakajima battle between Oyu and uh, Yamamoto, Yamamoto seems to be a bit stale and hasn't really moved much from his uh, qualifying position, whereas uh, Oyu, of course, was starting on the second row, fell right to the very back, and it's make, made the move to come through the field, and he's on the verge of, of coming through and passing Yamamoto. Yeah, I think Oyu may have uh, occupied every single position on the grid in one race, which isn't, which isn't a, a, a small feat either. As he is right on the back of his teammate, he's just biding his time at the moment, isn't he? He's not using his OTS, he's just waiting. Now, this is difficult as well. If you're Nakajima Racing Team Boss, what do you do? Do you, do you apply team orders? Clearly, OU's the faster guy, and, and it should be let through to attack the cars in front because Yamamoto is not going anywhere. Well, also, Yamamoto has deployed his OTS, so now he's on that recharge moment where he cannot use it. OU hasn't. So, as they step out of spoon curve onto backstretch, do not be surprised if OU presses that button and flies past his teammate. It's clearly got a lot more pace. He's just keeping the, the lines a lot tighter, a lot sharper, and getting on the power earlier, whereas Yamamoto he seems to be struggling with his balance right now. It's tricky, though, isn't it, coming to a new team and, and trying to get the setup direct, even if you've been racing for so many years, because it is slightly different, even though it's the same chassis, etc., etc. I just, I just not quite sure I understand because you know he clearly has got a lot of experience. He's, he's a three-time champion. It's a team that he has previously raced for, uh, but just hasn't quite found. The, the balance that suits him. Yeah, he'll be very disappointed. That red light on the top of Hirakawa's car, that must be quite a concern for him, especially when he looks in his mirrors and sees Sasahara's got a nice thick green light, which means he's got more OTS available to him. I wonder if we can switch, if we're going to switch to OU on Yamamoto, because they'll be coming out of Spoon at the moment. And Yamamoto and OU fighting it out for eighth place for Nakajima Racing at the moment. Top three, top four in the same picture now. Sekiguchi, the second of the Impul cars. It's been quite a point source for, for the Impul team at the moment, really, with uh, second and fourth. And a defence, a defence from Alessi, but cannot hold Kenta Yamashita off that time. Kenta Yamashita and Alessi have been fighting tooth and nail. He's not giving this one up, though, is he? Oh, well, he's going to stay oh, on the side outside. By side. He's on the inside now. He didn't give it up. Yamashita forced to take his foot off the gas. And there you go. Alessi says, you can try all you like, my friend, but you are not having me. And Alessi is really, really showing his cards in this first ever race for him in Super Formula. And I tell you what, that takes Quite a lot of bravery to what he just did. Extreme amount of bravery there to, you know, to hang on around the outside of the snake curve like he did there. And uh, determination as well not to give up that position. Mm. Well, we were talking a few moments ago, really, about OU and Yamamoto. And I can see that OU has got a red roll hoop now, so that might be why he's not been deploying his OTS. Yamamoto is really holding up OU. You can see the cars behind are closing in, and he's created such a train of cars behind him. So OU will be screaming in his radio to, to be let past his teammate. And uh, but what do you do? You know, you, what do you do? Do you tell your three-time champion teammate to let your young driver through? It's, uh, it's a bit of politics there. It certainly is. Unless he's now right in the back of OU, and... That'll be concerning OU a great deal. Since he's overtaken Kenzie Yamashita just a few moments ago, Alessi is starting to work his way off down the track ahead of him. And he is creeping, as we see, ever so close to the back end of OU. And Yamashita has now been taken as well by Sakaguchi under breaking into Casio Triangle. Sakaguchi goes past. Yamashita, what is going on with Kondo Racing's Kenzie Yamashita? He's going to try and make his way back, but he won't get past on this turn. Sakaguchi's got this one covered off, and Sakaguchi has had a very strong race, a dependable race, really, for the young driver. As we look at the two Nakajima racing drivers of Yamamoto, the three-time champion, the reigning champion, behind him is his young teammate, Oyu, after his switch to Nakajima racing, Yamamoto getting used to his new teammate. And behind him is the debutant of Giuliano Alessi here 
in Super Formula for Ventolin Team Tom sitting in for Kazuka Nakajima who is away on World Endurance Championship duty and will probably be so for the majority of the season and Lacey right on the gearbox now of OU with a big green roll hoop as well this is going to concern OU OU cannot get past his teammate will be desperately trying to get past his teammate screaming down the radio they're not sure they're going to allow this to happen though I think they're saying look guys race it is a race race for it and if you can overtake him well go for it but uh, don't crash into him that is the most important thing and Lacey breathing right down now on the back end of OU and I think he's got a good exit as well from Spoon he's also got more OTS available the flashing light tells me that they are starting to use the OTS here he goes. We can see now that Alessi has deployed his OTS. So did OU, but OU is perilously close to the end of his allocation of OTS. And Alessi right on the back. This could be a two-hander for Alessi. He could jump on both drivers, couldn't he, in one swift move. And this is so frustrating for OU. There he's, he's been desperately held up by a solid teammate. exit, a solid exit, and Alessi moves to the inside, lining this one up for the first corner. He's got him on the inside. This is brilliantly placed for Alessi. He uses OTS. He goes round on the inside and is straight on the back now of the second of the two Nakajima racing drivers of Naoki Yamamoto. OU will be hammering that steering wheel in anger that he couldn't get past his teammate and straight away Alessi is showing that he has got the pace. He is starting to stretch that gap now, get on the back of Yamamoto, if OU plays this one right though and he can gain on the back of Alessi, he could also use momentum from Alessi to jump past his teammate and I think that would be where the service should be in this race. OU deserves to be ahead of Yamamoto for sure. That was a strong move by Alessi there, really showing his cards like you say and uh, can he make a move on a three-time champion now? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there and say yes. Sorry, Alessi, if you end up falling off the track. His teammate Miata is in sixth. And Miata, Rotoma Miata, covered in for Kazuka Nakajima last year as Nakajima was away again on WEC duty because of the pandemic. And he got brought in to Ventolin and Team Toms to become Nakajima's teammate this year and now finds himself at a very, very young age, essentially being the, the main driver for Ventolin and Team Toms. Miata is the... Super Formula Lights champion absolutely waltzed it last season with so many race wins. Very, very impressive driver. Now, Yamamoto's pace right now is, is, is not very good at all. You can just see all the cars behind him, bunching up behind him. And Lacey's desperate to get close to him just to, to, to get that slipstream and jump on the OTS. But Ouyu is really struggling with dirty air now. That's the trouble, isn't he? He's in that gap, really, where he's just struggling with dirty air. And he, I, I feel sorry for him. Well, the problem is he spent so long under the gearbox just burning off those front tyres that he's possibly overheated the tyres. And and uh, as a result now, he's, he's lost grip and he's, he's falling, falling away. You know, he, he had three or four laps opportunity to get the move done and didn't get it done. And now he's paying the price. Two laps to go. Race leader Tomoki Nijiri ahead of Rio Hirakawa in Team Impulse. Some two seconds is the gap between these two drivers. Nigeria has just had a very solid race. He sat behind Fukuzumi, kept the gap at around two and a half seconds. Fukuzumi then fell off with that rear suspension or tyre failure. And Nigeria has just not looked back since, has he? Been a very controlled drive by Nigeria. For me, he's, he's, he's clearly putting, uh, he's, he's setting his stall out to be a, a championship contender this year. Feels like he's driving within his own ability as well. He's not stretching himself at the moment. So it makes me wonder how much he's got left in the tank if he really needed it. Oh, I would hate to think that, you know, it's, it's frustrating for Hirokawa. I feel like he's putting 10 temps in right now, but Najiri just seems to have a little bit in his pocket. Yeah, of course he's got clean air ahead of him as well. So Najiri doesn't have to work as hard. Green flashing light there. This is Alessi. He is on the back now of Yamamoto. Is he going to try it around Cassio? Try and he goes high. He's lining this one up for a decent exit into last curve and then hopefully use a slipstream. OTS still flashing bright. He's on the back end now of Yamamoto. He's going to get all he can to close up onto the back end of Yamamoto. Will he get close enough? Yamamoto also using OTS now as they head into the first corner. And it's a quick right-hander. 
not close enough, of course, from Alessi, but he is getting closer by the lap, although he's only got two more opportunities to get past Yamamoto at the tail end of this race. Alessi started eighth on the grid, has fallen back to ninth. It's been a very, very strong performance from the debutant driver in Super Formula, but he is in the back of a reigning champion, a three-time champion, experienced driver in Naoki Yamamoto, who is certainly feeling the pressure from the young Ventolin Team Tom's driver. He's pushing mega hard there, massive wobble there coming out of the left-hander there into Degger Curves. You know, Yamamoto's really struggling with the balance here, loads of oversteer, the rear just wants to step away, so yeah. he's really hanging on to the car. It's very twitchy under braking as well, so you were saying that he's struggling with the balance, and it does seem to be the case. You can see there through the, through the hairpin there, he's just not taking tight lines, he's taking very long, wide, open open lines. And that's, that's an indication for me that the rear is very nervous, he wants to slide away, so he's, he's just uh, managing the, the balance with the, with, uh, with the line he's taking. What would the debrief be like at Nakajima Racing? Guys, I need a better car. <laughs> but what about Oyu? What's he going to be saying? He, he'll be kicking himself. I mean, starting on the second row, he's had the pace to be on the podium. And uh, to, to come from the very back and, and make all the you know, passing opportunities and then to be frustrated, you know, he's stuck behind a teammate and not be allowed through, you know, he'll be kicking himself. I am surprised with all the experience as we head into the final lap, Nigeri looking very strong. I am surprised with all the experience of Naoki Yamamoto that he's not allowed OU to go through, knowing that uh, the team really should come first, though tell a racing driver the team That would first. never happen, no. That <laughs> exactly. Was... As I said it, I thought, well, what are you banging on about here? So Nigeri leads the way. We've got Hirakawa second and and Sasahara of Tacoma Team Dandelion third. Matsushita, great to see him back in that 51 car, the yellow car, Buzz Racing. It is so nice to see him back in Super Formula. He didn't look like he was going to get a drive this year after falling out with the big bosses at Honda, but after a, a, a change, really, at Honda HQ, they gave him an engine and he was allowed to race in 2021 for the Honda-backed team of Buzz Racing. So here we go, Najiri around this tight left-hander hairpin. It's just got to bury the throttle, go round nicely into spoon curve, the double apex spoon curve, onto back straight, round 130R, into Cassio Triangle, round the last curve, and he's home and hose. It's as simple as that, says me. That's easy enough for you to say. <laughs> One and a half seconds Hirakawa has closed out, but I think it might be really that Nigeria is just doing what he has to do. I think Hirakawa will be pretty happy, actually, with the second place, considering all that happened last year at Suzuka and his championship. But his championship is now very much... Uh, lined up for good things with a fourth last time out at Fuji. A second here as Najiri goes up to Casio Triangle. Can he take two wins in the first two races in Super Formula? This is unheard of in Super Formula history, really. We don't often see a driver dominate so much, but Najiri looking so, so strong. And over the line he goes. He wins his second race of the season, the second race of the season. And Tomoki Najiri has done it again. What a great, great performance for him and an overtake maybe as we go up to the line no no I can't call that one Martin we need to have a photo finish I cannot call that one as I was prattling on about how amazing the jury was we had that little uh, action there at the back I don't think he managed to sneak it through I'm just looking at the timing screens now as Tatiana Calderon completes the 17 cars that make it to the end it was pretty much a photo finish to, you know horse racing one don't we on the line really pretty much oh yeah, you there coming under pressure there from uh, Sakaguchi, yeah. it's a bit of a tight one. It was. It doesn't look like from the timing screens that Sakaguchi managed to, to get through. So Oyu, I think, maybe using just, just the, the nose cone of his car to finish 10th. But Tomoko Najiri, like I say, he wins two races here in Super Formula, the first two races of the season. He was brilliant at the back end of last year with a pole and a win at Autopolis, and that is where they go next, Martin. He's got a very, very good opportunity if he can uh, get himself through in Autopolis and win again. Now, consistency for me is key. Now that he's got these two wins in the bag, you don't always have to go out there and win races to win a championship. Now you're just going to be consistent, get podiums. If, if you've got a fifth place card, get, take fifth place. If you've got a third place card, get a podium. You, mm. you don't have to force the issue. You're in a perfect position right now. You've got to let the guys come to you. Looking at the timing screens, it was Sho Suboy on Naoki Yamamoto, I believe, and he jumped ahead of him. That we were looking at over the line. We called it as OU. It was actually Sho Suboy, and he made it ahead by 
three thousandths of a second. Splitting a deck of cards. Yeah, absolutely right. We'll look at that one again, I'm sure, in the post-show, but show Suboy on Naoki Yamamoto up to seventh. Yeah, that's what we saw at the very exit of last curve. It was show Suboy jumping on OTS, and he managed to creep past. But a great performance from this man, what Naoki up? Yamamoto. And if he can do like he did last year at Autopolis, like I say, is the next outing for Super Formula on the 16th of May. If he can go out there and maybe get a win or at least a podium, his championship hopes are extremely high. Very accomplished performance from him. Najiri led the way, Ryo Hirakawa second, Ukyo Sasahara, Yuhi Sekiguchi, the second of the Impul cars. I think Impul will be happy with their performance this weekend. Two cars inside the top four, second and a fourth place for them, a decent points haul for the team's championships. Otsu in the Red Bull Mugen car, fifth. Miata, sixth. Show Suboy, seventh by that whisker. Yamamoto, eighth. Giuliano Alesi and Toshiki Oyu, they round out the top ten. Oyu fell backwards, he got to tenth. So, two wins on the bounce going into Autopolis, where in fact he won last time out in 2020. So, can he make it three in a row? It would be incredible if he could. If he could do that, then you might as well start engraving his name on the trophy. Remember, his drop scores this year, they're five best results. If you can get three wins in Super Formula, <laughs> you know, in the season, I don't think we've ever had three wins. It's, un it's unheard of because this uh, championship is so competitive. It's a one-make series. There's 12 race winners, you know, in the whole field. And it's, it's unheard of that a driver is he's so dominant. So he's, he's come out of the gates flying right now. Slightly inheriting the opportunity, should we say, Najir. He didn't inher inherit the win by any chance because uh, Fukuzumi was, was racing, but Najiri uh, was really fighting the whole way. But you have to take the opportunities he when did. they come and they, you, know, you have to be there and be ready to, to step up. He did a brilliant performance as well. Look at that, being uh, congratulated there by Ryo Hirakawa. Najiri, the race winner, a very, very happy man. And well, Martin, we've got to pick through quite a lot of bones from that one at the very end of that race. OU, Nak uh, Yamamoto, we've got Fukuzumi, we've got Lacey out there performing well, Miyata, Najiri going on, Ryo Hirakawa. We'll have to get through all of that, and we'll do that in just a few moments here live on Red Bull TV. Don't go anywhere. Check out the Motor Channel on Red Bull TV. Motorsports at its finest, all over the globe. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. The Wales Rally GP, one of the toughest events on the World Rally Championship calendar. TV sports reporter and racing enthusiast Mike Chen has decided he's going to race in it. Mike Chen. Driving. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. Follow Mike's every move, from training to racing. Going straight sideways. Now available on Red Bull TV. <laughs> Becky Evans. Oh my God. AKA Queen B. I'm so excited. AKA the Queen of Cars is back with a new season. This year I'm going to prove I can make it to grassroots competition. What's the advice? The seat time. Seat time. Seat time. Seat time. It's going to be me to prove that I've got what it takes. Drift Queen Season 2. Now available on Red Bull TV. After the global lockdown, virus pandemic, national emergency, Formula One has been cancelled. The newly named Scuderia Alpha Tauri worked relentlessly to get ready for the new Formula One season. The world's getting back together again and we can get racing again. We are back in the game. Open the doors. Scuderia Alpha Tauri, now available on Red Bull TV. to me, it's just an addiction. 
This is beyond the wildest dream. I was born to race. It's everything. I don't feel you can get that same feeling anywhere else. Oh my God! You're on board for the greatest motorsport ride on the planet. We want to make this as loud, as fast, as crazy as possible. The very best of European drifting. The toughest hard enduro event. Welcome everybody to Straight Rhythm. It's out of control! Oh! never raced that fast in my life. MotoGP is up the way. Just send it. Why not? Oh, you don't have time to think. You can just drive. Yeah! Wide open! What a motorcycle race! What a Grand Prix! That is unbelievable! The Motor Channel on Red Bull TV. He is one of the greatest racers of all time. 2018 was his last season as an active rider in MotoGP. An intimate look at the highs and lows of an incredible career. Danny Pedrosa, The Silence of the Samurai. Now available on Red Bull TV. From rookie to top rider, the story of MotoGP talent Brad Binder fighting his way up the ranks. And he goes fastest! Oh! At the beginning, things were never easy. An intimate look into his life, both on track and off. I'm so lucky, I have the most amazing family. Brad Binder, becoming 33. Now available on Red Bull TV. Once again, the world's best riders team up for Moto9. Nine? Are you kidding me? I can't believe they're doing another one of these. Hit the trail with Dungy, Muskin, and many more. Riding dirt bikes to me is about the homies, and it's a way to harness that inner kid in all of us. Every piece of the dirt bike world in one epic ride. Moto 9, the movie, now available on Red Bull TV. We're going to transform the Lamborghini Huracan into an absolute drift weapon. This is beyond the wildest dream. We're gonna drop a grinder through it, wide body it, slam it. That's a typical mic, always. Find your limit, go back from there. Hey, hey, fire! My heart has never raced that fast in my life. Drift Lamborghini, now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to the Super Formula coverage here. Suzuka was the location. What a race we got in the end. Oh, yeah, what a race. Lots of action there. Not, not so much at the front. You know, it seemed to be uh, follow the leader, but especially in the back with, uh, with Oya, which we'll get to shortly. Yeah, there was uh, quite a lot going on, really, in pockets of the race as well. We had the race leader for Kuzumi doing brilliantly this weekend, not making it to the end with a, uh, a tyre failure, suspension failure, something like that. We'll have a look at that as well. But it was one of those races. Suzuka doesn't often um, leave us disappointed, and it didn't again. No, it didn't, for sure. I know there was lots of action, and... Uh, a lot, a lot of points to take away from this weekend. A lot of points for the race winner, Tomoka Najiri, as well. And we got a few words from him, the race winner. Congratulations to winning the second race, Tomoki Najiri. Thank you. You seemed like you were very pumped before the start. Well, I was just pretending, you know. Fukuzumi was really pumped too, and you know what, I won today, but I think actually this one was Fukuzumi's race. So I won the race, but still it feels a little bit like I lost it. So for the second race, we have to focus our energies and do our best at Autopolis. Yesterday at the free practice sessions, your results were not so good, and then in the qualifying, you got on second position, and now you won the race, so it seems like it's going your way. Well, it's my third season riding the SF19, and I know how to handle this car, Regardless of the situation, 
But as you said, um, it was not really a good result in the free practice session. And what I told the team how to adjust the car, it didn't really work out well. So we have to correct ourselves to and then look forward to the next one. Now let's hear from Mr. Tanaka, team director. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. That's all. <laughs> you said before the season's opener that you want to win every race from pole position to the flag. Yes, of course it didn't work out today, but I'm so happy that Nojiri could win today, so I'm really thankful to him. Congratulations again. Thank you. Well, both of them pretty much just saying it wasn't our race win, but we're pleased to have it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the most disappointed race winner that I've ever seen. You know, the, 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 those two guys were teammates in Super GT. Yeah. But like you said there, he felt like it was Fukuzumi's race to lose, and, and he just inherited there from, from bad luck. And again, he said that, you know, there's so much work they need to do to get the car right. And from free practice, they weren't so happy with the balance. So if he's winning races and he's not happy, that's uh, that's, that's not good, a good yeah. omen for the rest of the guys. He, he also won at Fuji. He won at Fuji the last round. He... Say Fukuzumi hadn't had that problem and he finished second today, that's still a decent points haul for your championship, isn't it? Of course. And so, so he's inherited even more points than that and he seems to be more disappointed. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how that one works out. I think it is really because it was a Super GT teammate really that had the, had the problem that let uh, or allowed Najiri to have the opportunity for the race win. But let's have a look at the graphic, shall we, at the confirmed, the classified result from the race. And in first place, it was, as we just heard, Tomoki Najiri. Ryu Hirakawa second, just one and a half seconds back. Ukyo Sasahara of third place for him for Sasahara. That was a really strong performance, uh, Dandelion Team Race and Driver in for Makino. Yuhi Sekiguchi fourth, Otsu fifth, Mayata in sixth, Shosuboy seventh. Look at that gap. Naoki Yamamoto eighth. We'll have a look at those two in a minute. Giuliano Alesi ninth, and Oyu in tenth. Sena Sekiguchi 11, Kenti Yamashita. Kondo Racing 12th, Matsushita making his return 13th, Nakayama 14, Oshima, Kotaka and Tatiana Calderon, both Yuji Kanemoto and Nirai Fukuzumi there not making it through to the end of the race. But there were small pockets uh, of action throughout the race. It was always super formal. You're always going to get something, aren't you? Of course, you know, there and there. I, I, I felt that no, Nirai had, uh, the, he had a measure over um, Hiro, Hirokawa. He just yeah. didn't quite... You know, I just don't think he could quite close that gap, and he was controlling the race after Fukuzumi dropped out. He was his race to lose. Yeah, well, let's have a look, then, shall we, at how well they were doing out on the front there with Ryo Hirakawa and Tomoki Najiri. The only real time that Najiri had a problem, really, was when they went into the pits, and they had to see whether they could get out in time. And here is Najiri in the pits right now, and... Um, the back left got a bit stuck, but it was a seven-second pit stop, and that is very, very quick in Super Formula terms. It was a quick, pit, quick pit stop, but just didn't, didn't quite get the gear. Yeah, and then Hirakawa went into the pits, and his pit stop was 0.1 of a second longer. But in that time, so we see him depart, so that was 7.1 seconds, and it was all down to what Najiri could do on that lap there, the difference, and he flew past him here, and then doesn't lock up by the look of it, but he did outbreak himself. He carried in so much more speed there, and just yeah. tried to ensure that he got back in front uh, to, you know, to get the race lead, and just, as you said there, just drifted wide. And because, well, he done a bit of damage to his tyres, not a huge amount by the look of things, but because Hirakawa was on cold tyres, it meant that Hirakawa couldn't really capitalise on it, and there is Najiri going over the line for the race win, and just to show how close he is behind, there is Ryo Hirakawa. You also saw a glimpse there of Sasahara in third place. Ukyo Sasahara is... Um, it kind of went under the radar, Ukyo Sasahara, of Team Dandelion. He's standing in at the moment for Makino, who is out with meningitis. We think we're likely to see Makino return for Autopolis, but Ukyo Sasahara, a really strong performance that, for that car, for that driver. A uh, great performance by him, and, and as a standing driver as well, it's so hard because you don't have any testing. And here we take a look at OU here, and this is where it all went wrong for him. He just dropped the clutch a bit too soon, the revs bogged down, and he lost, I think it was 11, 12. Six places he uh, fell back. Well, yeah. More than that, it was 12 places at the start, and then of course then he had a fantastic fight back to, to get back into the top 10, but just on the clutch there, just the finger clutch, just let it slip too soon. The revs dropped and bogged down the engine. 
and disaster struck. Yeah, he managed to tiptoe round though, didn't get uh, collected by anyone, and that is also very impressive. And that is something that I think OU has learned from last season, really, just how that he he must just stay in the race no matter what. Don't bin it on the first lap because you're never gonna you can't lose a race. You can't win a race in the first lap, really, but you can definitely lose a race in the first yeah. lap. I think OU is a very different driver this year. I think yeah. he's, he's matured a hell you know a hell of a lot. Last year that that would have sent him sprawling out of control. He would have been going for gaps that weren't there and, yeah. and causing incidents. But I think he realised that you've got to bring the car home in one piece. You know, team owners don't like it when you when you load the car on the trailer with with broken parts. You know, it's expensive. It's not good for for the budget. Yeah. And, and he's really matured. So I think. You know, we will see a better OU this year. Definitely came of age at Suzuka last year, and he's bringing it into this season as well. But Nirai Fukuzumi, he was the man of the weekend, really. And Najiri did mention that it was really his weekend. But Nirai Fukuzumi doing so well. You can see that he's already lost that rear right. And you think, Martin, it was probably suspension failure that caused that. Yeah, for me, it clearly looked like suspension failure there. The, 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 the upper wishbone was already deta detached from the, the car, which sent the car to ground. You saw that puff of smoke, which is an indication that the the wood floor on the rear diffuser is dragging on the floor and then potentially the uh, the wishbone would have just cut into the sidewall of the tyre leading to the, the failure. So straight into the pits for Nirai Fukuzumi, a real shame because it would have been great to see him and Najiri battle that one out. Teammates in Super GT, it would be great to see him going wheel to wheel out on track in anger. But it didn't uh, get to, to sort of work out that way and he'll have to dust himself off and fight another day. Another driver who's going to have to dust himself off and fight another day is the only other car really that didn't make it through the entire race distance as well and that was uh, Kanemoto. Yeah, it's very strange there. I think uh, well, Fukuzumi, it's, it's heartbreaking uh, what happened. And then I don't think it's related, but uh, another right rear failure, but this time was, was a puncture, sent him spinning off in the worst possible place on the track. You know, 130 yards, gear, 200 miles per hour. Just tagged the, the barrier and that launched him onto onto his roof. So thankfully he got out in one piece, but it's, it's, it's not what you want to see. Yeah, and as you see in F1 and all, all racing series now, open wheel, these roll hoops, these doing the job, that the, the halo doing the job. And it looked like he probably got pitched in. He was pirouetting all the way along, wasn't he? It looked like he got pitched in maybe backwards and that kind of helped him really with the way that car ended up. I don't know what's going on with these, with these cars, especially around here. We saw quite a lot of failures here this time last year as yeah. well. So there could be there could be a tire issue or whether or not it's just the amount of load going into the suspension that's causing these failures. But it's be interesting to see what, what, what the engineers yeah, say. I'm not sure they're even running the curb at that point either. So I don't think it's got anything to do with that either. No, it's, so it's, it's definitely not a circuit where you where you take a lot of curves, very you know smooth track. So uh, I'd, I'd like to know what's going on. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see when I have to keep our eyes open for the news on that one. I'm sure there'll be reports coming over the next few hours. What about this then? Shosu boy and uh, Yamamoto, Naoki Yamamoto, the reigning champion. Well, <laughs> it was such a battle to the end. Shuboy and himself, Yamamoto, fighting it through. Shuboy on the outside here, into the snake. That's the first corner, into the snake, sticking it on the inside because he knows what's coming next fighting it through and managing to take that position. And at the very, very end of the race as well, whilst I was waxing lyrical about how amazing Tomoko Najiri was, they were still fighting it out and they crossed the line, photo finished three thousandths of a second between them. Three thousandths of a second. You can't even put a, a distance no, on that. No, you blink in three tenths of a second. Well. So three thousandths is... Ridiculous. It's nothing. No. So it would be a photo finish and they'd have to analyse it using VAR, I imagine. It was a phenomenal performance. Show Suboy one of those drivers really that you'd like to see being consistent and at the sharp end because he could be a potential champion, really. He's definitely a star of the future. But for me, the, the biggest disappointment today was, was Yamamoto. He uh, started in 10th and, and didn't really progress a lot from there, whereas his, his teammate o OU started on the front, mm. dropped to the back and made his way back up to his, his tail and uh, really showed him. Well, Yamamoto held his teammate up, as you were saying, and it was Giuliano Alessi on his debut for Ventolin Team Toms, and he sort of took advantage, really, got past OU and got on the back of Yamamoto as well. And here he is, the left-hand side, you can see the screen there, the green car, the Ventolin Team's car, Toms car of Alessi, taking it onto the inside of OU and making that one stick. And that was after a big battle with OU and Yamamoto, where Yamamoto wasn't allowing OU to go past. OU couldn't quite get up close enough because of the dirty air. Alesi managing to get onto the back of him. And a really strong, strong result for Alesi, finishing ninth in his debut in Super Formula. But it was the way he went about it. Yeah, he dropped one position overall from his, his qualifying position. But I hope, 
And I expect that he would be happy with that because he's also racing Super Formula Lights. So believe it or not, that was his third race of this weekend and he's got one more race to come. Yeah, indeed. I think, you know, being a standing driver, I mean, he's got that first race nerves out of the way. He knows how to manage the tyres and the car over a long period now. So when he, when he hopefully does step back in the car this season, we will see uh, a much improved LAC. Yeah, absolutely. Well, drivers working very hard to earn trophies in Super Formula. As always, let's see the podium celebration. Great to see Tanaki Najiri there winning another race. That's three now in the last six races he's won in Super Formula. He's, uh, he's got quite good form, hasn't he? He's definitely the form man right now, and, and the Hirokawa will, will possibly be ruining his, uh, his last opportunity last year, knowing that that was his championship to, to win in yeah. 2020. And now there's a new crop of drivers who are the favourites this year. But Hirokawa could also spin this one as well. He had a nightmare really last time at Suzuka, and he's come out this time round. His opening two races of the season for Hirokawa have been pretty strong. He finished fourth last time out, and he's got a second this time. So, you know, his points haul at this stage is actually not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just knocking this guy off the top spot and actually really knocking him quite a long way down for a couple of races. And it's been well reported as well that the, the, the Honda drivers have a slight advantage at these kind of circuits, but when we get to uh, the tracks which are more Toyota yeah, circuits, such as you know, Autopolis, the tight, twisty tracks, that's when we'll see Hirokawa come back to the front and, and be a contender. Yeah, and I think he'll learn, well, he definitely would have learned from last season as the drivers uh, wave the flags of their respective engines, Honda and Toyota holding their trophies. What is on that trophy? It looks like a stack. Oh, it's a deer and a bell, so... Uh, a deer and a bell. I wish I knew the full story, but Suzuka in Japanese literally means deer and bell. OK. And uh, you'll have to do use Wikipedia, but it's something to do but with ancient history. Uh, emperors was fighting, you know, uh, escaping a, a horde and uh, escaped on a deer with a bell attached to its neck to ward off uh, wild animals. OK. So I've, actually got, I've, I've actually got one of those trophies, and there's the history on the back, but I forget the history. Yeah, we'll have to look into the history of that one because, um, well, you know, we don't know the history, but a deer and a bell is very, very exciting. So uh, great to see the drivers there uh, taking the plaudits, really, for what was a pretty, pretty impressive performance. Jerry waving away. And now then, so it's good to have uh, a podium ceremony. It's nice to see the drivers waving and seeming as happy as they can be. And uh, we have got more races coming for you on Red Bull TV. If you want to pick through the bones of what happened last time out as well at Fuji, you can always find all the action on Red Bull TV. And I urge you to go and have a look for yourselves, really, because uh, it is all there for you. So uh, go to Red Bull TV. You'll find all the races, all the qualifying from this year, from last season as well. And you can see what we're talking about when it comes to Suzuka last year. But we have got more on its way, as I say. 
say, including other action here on Red Bull TV. But Super Formula Round 3 is on its way from Autopolis on the 15th and 16th of May. And Mike Chen will be back for that one. I think you're here as well, Martin, aren't you? I'll be back for sure. I shall be in for the rest of the season. And uh, I just can't wait. It's going to be a fantastic year. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be great. I'll be tuning in from, I don't know, the comfort of my living room, my baby on my chest, probably, something like that. It's quite nice, isn't it? I'll be sitting there with my feet up and a cup of tea at six o'clock in the morning watching you guys. But do make sure you join the next action from Super Formula. It is a brilliant, brilliant series. Hopefully you've enjoyed the coverage of this one too. And on Red Bull TV, it's not all about four-wheel racing. You can also find two-wheel uh, two racing as well from the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup. That is also there for you. Next rounds, first and second of May. Rounds three and four from Jerez in Spain. Great action as always in the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup. So do tune into that one. You can also catch all the action from past races again on Red Bull TV. So if you like your two wheels and you like your four wheels, go to Red Bull TV and you'll find loads and loads of stuff there. So that has been a, a brilliant, brilliant way, race for us, I think, from Suzuka. We got to see pretty much what, what Super Formula can offer. Autopolis, a very different sort of circuit and one I'm looking forward to tuning into and one I'm sure you're expecting uh, great things from. Now, the season is still in the early stages. It's still heating up and I cannot wait for the rest of the year now. Yeah, absolutely. So make sure you tune in, as we say, coming up on the 15th and 16th of May, live on Red Red Bull TV. Join Mike Chen, join Mr. Plowman here for all the action from me and from Martin. Do take care. We'll see you soon.